Okay, Frank, now we've been introduced to the Liberator, but I really want to get inside it. So, you, is there a no, way? Nope, I don't know if it's, the creep factor just went up to a I'll accentuate bit. another word. <laughs> All right, Frank, we've been introduced to the Liberator, but now I think it's time that you and I really get in there and look at this thing. So, uh, Mad Frankenstein, why don't you show me how this thing's put together, what we're working with here. All right, basically, the Liberator is made up of two sections, if you will, mm -hmm. right? The front section, these 10 connectors, these 10 stations across the front, that's the pickup mm -hmm. input. All right. The pickup wires go there, and then these corresponding wires, they go to wherever the pickup wires would have gone anyway. So if you've got a coil switch, you mm -hmm. know, you've got a phase switch, doesn't matter. Series parallel, you could set it up however you want. And then every time you go and put your different pickup in, mm -hmm. it just goes right in and everything is stays intact. The stations in the back, these four stations, that's your interface with the potentiometer. So for these guys, you got one, two, three, in, out, and then the third lug, which is ground. And you can see a fourth one here. The fourth one is a redundant ground. So that's for your tremolo cavity ground, mm, right. or if you needed one, a place to tap in to get to your tone pot or something like that, um, you can use that fourth redundant ground station. And then you'll notice that these uh, solder pads behind here. If you have like an inexpensive soldering iron or if you're new to soldering, one of the hardest parts is getting the solder to stick to the back of the potentiometer. Uh, that can act like a heat sink. It takes the heat out of the iron and takes forever and you end up with cold solder joints. What we did was we put these gold plated solder pads on the back for all these ground places. Uh, the solder just flows so easily. There's other soldered pads for the in, the out, and the ground of the potentiometer. So if somebody preferred a soldered connection for those terminals, they would can do that as well. So we were deciding what kind of connector to use. We looked at all these different kinds of connectors, and essentially, there's various types, okay? One type is going to be a push connector. Mm -hmm. um, you guys have seen this on speakers before. Oh, it's yeah. a pretty tight connector, um, but... When it comes to passive pickups, the high impedance signal from a passive pickup is very, very delicate. Uh, it, you know, it actually can degrade with cable capacitance, it can degrade with uh, resistance building up in different places in the circuit. And so what the Liberator allows you to do is maintain a soldered connection here at the jack, and you just take those jack wires and feed them right into the potentiometer um, terminal. Mm -hmm. There's other, like here's another push connector. Uh, again, nothing wrong with it, it works fine. Um, but over time they can loosen up, these guys, these little slip connectors. The other thing that happens with some of these push connectors is when you get everything all wired in just right and plugged in, if you're trying to then cram that into a small, tight control cavity, mm -hmm. these things can kind of wiggle out and wiggle yeah. loose as you're trying to put the thing together. So then it's together and all of a sudden one of the pickups doesn't work or whatever. Um, because it's not going to vibrate too much or move around once the guitar is put back together. It's just a question of working with it when you're trying mm -hmm. to get it in the guitar. And so, for those reasons, um, we're not looking at a push connector inside okay. there. Here's another kind that's like a spring-loaded. Mm -hmm. We looked at this one. Um, you push this down, put the wire in, and let go. It's so hard to push it down. Right. I Looks mean, the like spring, it. yeah, I mean, it takes so much pressure yeah. that on a circuit board like this, you'd be cracking traces right. on the circuit boards, you know. This one's the same deal. You push it open and then put the wire in and then push it back. But all that extra pressure right. that's required, like I said, you, you know, you'd be cracking circuit boards or damaging right. circuit traces um, and after repeated use with something like this. So we ended up with deciding on a screw connector and you've got uh, screw connectors like this mm -hmm. where you screw the screw down and it actually pushes this thing down on the wire. That can actually push it down and out. Um, depending on what wire gauge you're feeding into it. So generally speaking, we didn't find this kind of a screw connector to be advantageous. Um, the screw connector that we settled on, actually when you screw the screw down, mm -hmm. first thing that happens is it's touching a, it's a, a stationary plate. So the mm -hmm. screw's not bearing down on the wire, okay? It's got its own solid plate that actually is what's hitting the wire. But then you have this carriage that comes up from the underside and lifts up to meet the wire. So you never have this friction point. Oh. You just have this tight clamping of mm -hmm. the of the wire inside the connector. Uh, we felt like that was the best uh, connection method. Here's one where it's bigger. This is kind of oversized. You try to line up 10 of these uh, yeah. in an electric guitar control cavity, it's just not gonna fit. Yeah. And you saw, we put it in a real thin, slim body guitar, yeah. and everything fit just fine. 
Um, but then some other people started sending us some other connections, like, oh, this one's less expensive. You know, mm -hmm. can you substitute this? What about this? And um, we took them apart, and, you know, like the screws that were used were more roughly machined. Yeah, they don't look good. Yeah, there's not a, as, uh, it's, it, the, the tolerance aren't as, as, aren't a, as tight. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that we noticed is the block was shorter. So you end up with less number of threads mm -hmm. uh, in each block, which again translates to the ability right. to kind of wear out over time. So what we did was we found the best solution for solving most of the people's problems, but then also not changing the situation for people who are happy to solder. You know, if you've been installing pickups, you don't mind solder, you like yeah. soldering it in. Um, we didn't change the way we made our pickups. This solution means that we still make our pickups the same way we always have. You know, we've been making, I mean, you take a pickup like a 59 and making it for th over 30 years. Right. You know, I I'm not going to have it where you turn it over, all of a sudden there's like five pins yeah. and screws coming out, right? It's just not the same thing. So we didn't have to change anything about the way we made our pickups. And if you want to have a liberator in your guitar, you put a liberator in your guitar. There you go. Liberate yourself, liberate your sound. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>